This is a healing service. We move uh, as the Lord has spoken to our hearts and we welcome you who are on the hill up there. There are a number of people up there, a great number of cars. We welcome you around the world. We welcome more than 1,700 listeners right now around the world, around the country, in Tennessee, in Wisconsin, in Upper State New York, in Texas, in Southeast Asia, listen, in South Korea, in the tropics, in Africa. And I want to let's clap our hands and welcome them to the service today. I wish that I could spot all of you. I, I don't know all of you. I know most of you, but I'd love to get a chance to know you. And if you would make sure that you fill out a visitor card so that we can welcome you to the service and we'll just send you a letter, okay? Now, I thank you because you can uh, have been here and you've been standing and I want you to be seated. I thank you. Today, I know when I'm, I'm moving with the Lord, okay? Because the devil fights you so much when you move with the Lord. And everything that he has done this week has been to stop this service. I'm going to speak very briefly and teach and share with you some things that the Lord has shared with me. So you'll know, I think people who are informed appreciate it much more. At the end of the service, we're going to pray for people who are sick. We'll have a special way of praying for people who are sick. We're going to give you something to take with you, not to take, but to take with you so that it will remind you of this day right here. It's going to be a, a very special time for, for you and for this church. I do not know who is in need. I have no idea except those who've called me. Well, there are those in the parking lot. There are those here in the church. There are those who aren't able to come. And there are people around the country who are listening today who want us to pray for them. So all I'm going to ask you to do is just to believe with me. I'm not going to ask you to do, we're not any hocus pocus or nothing like that. I'm not like that. You ought to know that by now. But for weeks now, I felt it. And last week, I said, I'm going to speak on healing. The devil said, you can't do it because you don't have any way to get to the people. I said, okay, I'm going to do it anyway. And today, we will devise a means for us to speak to those who are, are sick today and to those who want to pray for people who are sick. I would remind you also that in this service, there are about 30 or 35 people who have been doing nothing but praying and studying divine healing in the last couple of months and who are here and they have been praying for you and they're in this service scattered around outside and inside, ready to pray. And I don't know how we're going to do it for the uh, people on the hill up there who are in parking, but we will find a way because we've got ushers and people there right now who, when they let them know, they're going to go to their car and give them something so that they'll know that we're praying. Here's a scripture that I chose. Nothing dramatic about it. You know the scripture yourself. The, the Lord spoke with this scripture right here of all places for healing in Exodus is chapter 15 and verse 26. I'll read it and then I'll tell you the thing that is behind this. Here's what it says. And the Lord said, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and you will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep his statutes. I will not put any of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. 
For now, I want you to know my name. My name is Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord that healeth thee. At other times, it will be another name for God. But his name is healing. And at the very beginning of time, at the beginning of the word, he states it clearly. He wants to heal you. And for those who call out to you that he wants you sick, they are not supposed to run to the doctor the next time or get medicine. God wants us healed. And I want healing for my life. I want healing for my family. I want healing for my church. I want healing for my nation. Can I get a good amen on that? I really believe in healing. Now, when we clap, we're all going to clap together. Okay, can y'all do that? You can do that. Come on. It is mentioned in most of the places, this thing called healing, in the New Testament and throughout the Old Testament, miracles of healing and great astonishing miracles are given. And I have brought some of them to you today and I'm gonna show you some of them in a few minutes. But the first thing that I want to tell you is the reason that I chose this scripture is because I have a book in my library that is called None of These Diseases. It is written not by a uh, quote unquote, what do you call it, spiritual man or a preacher or a healing evangelist, not so. It is written by a medical man by the name of S. I. Macmillan. He wrote none of these diseases and then later his grandson teamed up with him and they gave updates on it and it has been one of the best sellers in the last part of the, or the last part of the last century and millennium. In the book, this is not a book review, but in the book, S.I. McMillan, a great believer, said that there are tenets of faith in the scripture and things that God has laid down for us that if we would do these things, healing is ours. I read review after review that said when I started to practice what Dr. McMillan told us about the none of these diseases, then I saw good health come to my family and to my life. Everything from circumcision and when God said it was supposed to be to the eating of certain animals and blood and the way you keep yourself and much of our sanitary system like the uh, like the legal system not, no uh, association there came from the word of God and I would encourage you if you want to to get the book most folks do not tell books but I want to tell you the book S.I. Macmillan none of these diseases because Jesus said, I will put none of them upon you. The first thing that I want to say about the healing is that every time God mentions healing in the Bible, the Hebrews mentioned it in another word, which meant not only saving of souls, but it meant healing of bodies and material things as well. Now we obviously have been brainwashed to believe that if you believe in good healing or in good health, 
that you were robbing God or that you were being a fanatic. Well, let it be done. I believe in good healing. Can I hear an amen from somebody? I really want healing and I want it for you also. But I want to make sure that we understand it. The word saving, when we use it, the Lord saved me and sanctified me and filled me with the Holy Spirit. We know how to do those things and to say them perfectly. But the word saving there is the word in the Greek and the Aramaic, which literally means to save you spiritually and physically. There is healing in the words of uh, Jesus, in the words of the scripture. It meant the same for material things. I'm not a materialist, but it meant the same. God wants you to prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. I have the scripture for that if you'd like to see it. He wants you to have good things. He gets no joy out of hearing that one of his is sick. And that's why a moratorium is coming against the sickness that has invaded this country, this state, and this city, that God wants to heal you. And that's why I had them to put it on the marquee, God really wants to heal you. You believe it, don't you? I know you do. Whenever Jesus did his healings, watch his ministry. You will see flowing after those healings and those miracles, people being saved and receiving eternal life. It's just that when Jesus walked the earth for three and a half years with his ministry, they did not use the term save as much as we do now. We said, receive a new life. What, was, what else was it with Nicodemus? Says you'll go back and get a new birth. Is that right? With others, he said, you'll get a new, it's like a metamorphosis. It's, it doesn't matter what you call it. It's a new life. It's not just moving one way to the, it could be moving out of darkness into new light. Whatever it is, is indicative of the fact that God really wants you to be better and he wants you to be different and to change from one kingdom to the next. Matthew chapter four and 23, I want to show you so you can read it yourself. It says, and Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues. Now watch now, let's see what he does. What's the word beginning with a T? What does he do? You gotta be better than that. Come on, what's the word he does? Begins with a T. He teaches. He teaches. That means you got to listen. You got to work at it. He taught. He taught in their synagogues and he preached. So teaching, say it. Come on, teaching and, and preaching. It's, it's here, Matthew 4, 23. The gospel of the kingdom. That's what they preached. They didn't preach nonsense. They didn't preach things. They just preach the gospel of the kingdom. We've told you what the gospel is, and that is that Jesus preached about his own and prophesied about his own death and resurrection. And that is the gospel that we have today when we preach the gospel. It's not something that other people concoct. It's real. Uh, and healing all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of disease among the people. Healing was part of the assignment that Jesus gave to the 12. I've been going into it, and you can imagine having been able to read and study and pray. What you see when you look at it in a closer way, when Jesus went into a place, you're gonna see his pattern. He then sent his disciples in first, and then he followed them later into these provinces, these cities and these areas. You'll see it. 
if you just follow me and I'll get right into it. The second one I want you to see is Matthew 10, 1 and 5, 7 through 8. And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits. It's what he did. He said, you have the power over it. Do it in my name, he says. It's the power of attorney. Not in your name. Do it in my name, he says. He called his 12 disciples to him, and he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. These 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, as you go, preach, saying, that means proclaim it, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, and freely you shall give. Now let's look at another one. Luke chapter 10. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, now you heard what I spoke to you a minute ago. It says that he sent them two by two before his face and before he appears and shows his face. That's just the way they explained it and, and expressed it. Into every city where he himself was about to go. They went first. He's got his way. Billy Graham and all of them did it and, and these other guys, James Robinson and all them, Jerry Falwell, when they'd send out, they'd send out somebody first and get the people together for them. And heal the sick, he says, who are there. Do it before I get there, he said. Uh, say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Now this healing was a part of the new great commission that Jesus gave to his followers. Two years ago, maybe three, I was asked to give a study and I gave a study on Jesus and divine healing in the atonement. Folks said, oh, no, no. And writers said, oh, no, no, it's not so. Boy, how can we stand in darkness? Let me give you another one to show you how it was a part of this great commission. Mark chapter 16 on PowerPoint. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs shall follow them who believe in my name. Watch, it's not me saying this. In my name, they will cast out demons, devils, demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, not to go and handle snakes. But if any, you pick up one accidentally, it's gonna, he's gonna shake it all. Paul proved that. He's prophesying. Nothing that you drink will hurt you. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. The last 11 words that he spoke in English were they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It's not mine, but it's his. Now it becomes mine and it becomes yours. Now you can see why I seem to be rather dogmatic about the laying on of hands and there are many others in this church and in other churches around and in hospitals and in movements that are not especially uh, evangelical that believe that healing is a part of the atonement and a part of the Great Commission. I, I do not know why you see it more in third world countries, but I have seen it in third world countries. And I have come to the conclusion that it might be, Pastor Tommy, that they don't have the money for medicine or they do not know all of the things that we know for knowledge can really hurt you if you're not careful. And so they just believe that if God promised it, he would do it. Now here's what I've seen. A gorda to fall off. A dress that someone had on the skirt about like this was about to fall off and the woman had to grab it because a growth 
Now, yeah, but you had, you must have had uh, T.L. Osmond praying. No. Were you praying? No. Howard Altman was praying. The late Mr. Altman was praying. And when he prayed for her, simply prayed, the growth fell, just disappeared. And she had to grab the dress. Somebody grabbed it for the woman that was in the island of Haiti. Now follow me. I have seen it in the casting out of demons and devils. And I've seen it here with that kind of thing and with the healing of the sick and with God healing. And I have testimonies that I have right here, but I'm not going to share them today. I don't know why I should, shouldn't, but I mean, I don't have time. But I don't want to do that now. I want to do it later because three in particular have had a healing touch. Big stuff. There are some today that are listening right now. Maybe you're on the hill. Maybe you're in your bed over in uh, your home or the hospital. Maybe you're in Africa. Maybe you're in Southeast Asia. Jehovah Rapha is here. Jehovah Rapha is the Lord that healeth you. This is what he was saying is that my name is Rapha. Now, if you went down Skybo Road toward the mall, you will see a place on the left after you pass McPherson. And it's a big plant there, it looks like. It's called Rafa. I saw that a number of times, and then I realized that that was the healing ministry of Dr. Daniel Uba, our own man who is here, no doubt, today. He's been here every day for the last few weeks. And because he knows that the name of God is healing. Doctors are seeing this and they're warning us to proclaim the healing. Do not kid yourself at all. It is done in the name of Jesus. It is not done by saying Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, Reckless. It's not done that way. It's not done by being able to sing in tongues or to, or to shout in tongues. I mean, it might do, it may come with that. I don't say it won't. Oh, let it come any way with me. Say amen, somebody. But I'm telling you that nobody has a prescription on it and nobody has a certain way that it's got to come. The Lord knows what he's doing. Let the Lord be true and you just be what God wants you to be. When you get to the name of Jesus, now I've wanted to do this for quite a while and haven't had time. I'll take a couple of minutes here. When you get to the name of Jesus, we say, you're in his name. We say, you're in the name of Jesus. We say it, we do it in vain. We don't even know what we're talking about. I mean, I, I didn't. And still don't know much about it. But everything that I can get from those who know the Hebrew, they said that any word from God is never in just a placid, useless thought. It is, of course, thoughts. But a word with him, when he speaks it, is action. God does not wait, God moves. Now let me clear it with you through Henry Blackaby. Henry Blackaby, you all know you've studied discipleship with me. I know you have. He brought out the fact that Moses is on the backside of the desert in the Negev. God talks to him and Moses looks at him and said, but God, you've been doing nothing and I've been down here with these stinking sheep and goats. I talk like a goat. Bah, 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 bah. And God, I've been down here for 40 years wondering what we could do to get the people free. You had not been doing anything. And God said, Exodus chapter two and three, while you have been tending to goats and thinking, I have been moving. I have not been still. I've been hearing the moans of the people. I've been seeing the afflictions of the people. I've been moving about and getting it ready. So don't you accuse me, Moses, of not doing anything. You're the one who are caught up in your 
thoughts and dream world. But I am moving because my name signifies that I am moving. And when you are in my name, it means that everything that I have, Moses, belongs to you. And Moses, if I'm able to start a tree to burning, you are able to do it. Moses, if I'm able to cause a snake to jump up out the rod of yours, then Moses, you can do it also. And Moses, if I can stretch out my hand to afflict, you can do it. And Moses, if I can stretch out my hand to heal, you can do it. And Moses, you've got to come off of this stuff that you are just doing things there. All you're doing is thinking and you're dealing with platitudes. But Moses, I'm moving because I am the Lord. Listen to what he says, that healeth thee. Right now, while you've been doing your thing and I've been doing mine, God's been getting us ready. And you and I don't realize what God is doing today, but God is working on something right now in your life and in my life. Now, frankly, if you want to know what I think about it, I just don't like what he's doing to me right now or what's happening to me or allowing it to happen. But I know this, that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them who are called according to his purpose. And I don't know where you are on the hill today or in your house or around the world, but I want you to know that God is not dead. God is working and moving and he's getting you ready for a miracle today. If you believe it, clap your hands together and praise him today. In him, everything that he is is what you are when you go unto him. Let me just give you another little shot. Even in the very beginning, when the world was without form and void, God didn't just sit there on a cloud bank because he's never pictured sitting around leaning over saying, oh, I wish this and I could do that and I think this, no. God takes off on the wings of the morning and says, Father, let's tackle the void right now. And he moved in his spirit on the face of the deep void and said, let there be a firmament and let there be light. And it became that because when God starts moving, you had better look out and things in your life are going to change if you'll allow God to begin to move because he is a God of action. Hallelujah for that. I thought about Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 37. God is getting ready to do something great. He's going to speak to the open graves. He's going to bring the people back. And God speaks and he says, I will yet for being inquired. It's a little jumble up in the King James, but that's what it says. By the house of Israel, if they will just call upon me. For I want to tell the house of Israel, if they will but call upon me, I will answer them. And the thing came, and you can read it yourself from the 36th chapter, and you'll see that God said, now I'm going to move because they've called upon me. We talk about no tears in heaven. You think they're going to be crying and shedding tears in heaven. I think that the greatest amount of tears, if there are buckets full of them in heaven, it's going to be a bucket full of tears for every prayer that we prayed and we failed to believe God. Now, if you think that you're going to just pray a little prayer, now I'll lay me down to sleep and bless me, God, and bless all those with me, it's not coming like that. It's coming through real prayer. And I want to tell you that in this world that we're living in right now, the things that we're facing, they are not going to come to pass unless we begin to pray. Yeah, but pastor, I'm praying. I'm all right. I mean real prayer. 
And I say it to you again that God doesn't answer prayer. E.M. Bound says God answers heavy praying, sincere praying, fervid, fervent, hot prayers. That's what God answers. And if we think for one minute that we're going to just pray a little prayer and God's going to do the answering, it's not going to come like that. God's going to answer you when you and I come before him boldly and say, Lord, we will not let you go. When we get down by the Jabbok River like Jacob did, when he said, let me go, and Jacob says, I will not let you go, not until you bless me. How much do you want his blessing today? How much do you want God to bless your church? How much do you want God to bless your family? How much do you want God to bless this land? How much do you want God to be upon us? Do you want it bad enough to stay at the altar and pray until God moves by the power of the Holy Spirit and gives action to his name? How much do you, come on, put your hands together. It's all right, you're a little lazy to do that, aren't you? You're afraid. God's gonna ask you for something. He is. I think we just don't pray. So I was not satisfied, so I went to Andrew Murray because Andrew Murray is the one that everybody loves to go to. I went to Andrew Murray to ask him about this thing called prayer and about divine healing. I said, oh, he's gonna give us some nice little thing, platitude or something. But it never said that. Andrew Murray said, all I know is, is that God promised it and he'll deliver. He said, and I come to this basic conclusion that we do not have the miracle because you can read his book if you want to on healing. He said, simply because we do not believe. You say, you're telling us things that just aren't right. I'm giving you what Andrew Murray said. You believe in what he says about the scripture and about prayer and all these things and you teach it and everything else. Listen to what he says. Now, what I want to ask you to do is if you want prayer and if you want to be healed, to let's believe God that God is going to heal you. I mean, Jesus wants you to be prayed for, and Jesus wants to heal you, and I believe he's going to heal you. And this is why I've made it to this service today And I want you to know, the devil said, there ain't no way you're going to make it to that church today. I'm standing here because I feel the calling of God to tell you this, that God really wants to heal you. And if I were lying there on a cot or with my back broke, I'd still say, listen, it's God's will to heal you. And don't let anybody tell you that God doesn't want to heal. He's the Lord God that healeth thee. And God wants to prove it today. And everybody said, amen. So therefore, I say to you today, specifically for your healing, whatever it is, whatever your condition is, that I'm going to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to heal something special about somebody. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop right now. I know I'm not supposed to, but I am, because I want to pray for you. Now, John, you can't get out here. I know it. I know I can't do that. But, I mean, there's no distance in prayer. Will somebody say amen? Amen. You got to back me right now. I'm in uncharted territory. Pastor, I've been fighting something for a long time. But I believe that the Lord can heal me, and I believe the Lord wants to heal me. Not just can. We like to say he can do it. Oh, he can do it but that he will, that he wants to. I want to see your hand all over the house. Let me see your hand. Put them up high. Okay. Now, I want to see a little bit better than that. If you really believe that God can heal you right now and that you'll receive the prayer that comes straight from the Word of God, I want you to take it with me right now. I want you to stand up on your feet right now, all over this house. Don't don't sit back down all over this house, okay? Well, amen, Lord. Now on the hill, I wish I could see you, but I can't. 
but an usher will tell me, if you want prayer, you can't stand, but you can flip your lights four or five times and let a person know who you are, and they're going to come to you and stand close to you, but not at you. Because they're going to give you something. And we've had a team working. And this is what we prepared for you right here. Jehovah Rapha, I am the Lord who heals you. Exodus 15 and 26 from the Amplified Bible. Now, I'm going to ask people who are supposed to be with me on this in the parking lot and here, since I can't come out there. I've already met you this morning at 9.30. There were about 25 or 30 or more saying, I'm ready, Pastor. They're going to come and stand in an aisle. It doesn't matter. So you're doing it right now. That's right. You're jumping at it all over. You say, well, I don't know if they're able to pray for me or not. They are able to pray. Well, I'm telling you they are able to pray. Now, I'm going to tell you while you stand, just stand and don't, don't touch anybody. We're going to be socially right. I don't know if I'm socially right or unsocially wrong, but I'm, I'm doing it anyway. Now, I've got to tell you this. She sat right there on the third row. She never missed a Sunday. She never missed for anything. She said, I'm from the Can't Miss a Thing Club. She'd been a Presbyterian all of her life. Dined with kings and princes and princesses and queens. But when God got a hold of her in a Jerry B. Walker meeting, she changed. But Robin, you remember now, and you know who I'm talking about, don't you? She, she got sick and had what they call a stroke. Am I right? Had a stroke and ended up on the fourth, fifth floor of Cape Fear Valley. I went, Sandra, to Cape Fear Valley. And as I was there, one of the people came that was in her family. I hope I don't say the wrong thing. They came and they said it like this and they were really earnest. They were earnest, so earnest, okay? Joe, they said, Pastor, I just, I've just got to come and tell you this. In my meditations today, early this morning, the Lord came to me and spoke to me and told me that it was time for Mom Bruce to go home. I know she's in heaven. She's seeing us right now and hearing it. She said, go, John. And Drury, that's what she called us. And so I said, well, step out with me a minute, if you will. Uh, I just heard from heaven. <laughs> it's bad to say that. I mean, I'm really bad. I mean, please, please don't pray for me about this because I don't want to change, okay? I said, I just heard from heaven. And God didn't, God didn't give me that answer. She said, he didn't? I said, no. I said, God told me that he was going to spare her and give her, well, you out on a limb now when you get like this, you know. And God said, Irene, I'm going to give her more years. They said, okay. I said, because God already told me what to do now. Some of you don't remember, but we took scriptures to this woman's room and put them all on the wall, Brother Anderson, okay? So that when she looked up, she could just read the scripture. And it was healing scriptures like these. I want you to see them right now from page three. Father, in Jesus' name, can we, can we do those? A, a lot of them right here. In, on page three, Father, in Jesus' name, what's the shortness of it? I ask you to heal the cones and the rods in the retina of this eye. Now, when you're praying for somebody, we're going to get specific. We're not going to pray for something way out, Chanda. We're going to pray for right now. I don't know what your problem is. 
but we're going to pray things like this today. Father, in the name of Jesus, cause the scar tissue on that hip bone to go away. Lord, let this eye turn straight and let the cataract be removed in Jesus' name. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. I command these two discs that are rubbing each other and causing the severe pain to leave this body. Get out of it in Jesus' name. Begin to say it today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, because of who I am, dear God, I ask you to heal the liver today right now. Let it pump the right things, filter the right things. In the name of Jesus, I command every spirit that afflicts this woman today to leave this woman and let her go in Jesus' name. I command this stiffness in this leg and the circulation of this blood to flow freely in this appendage. I command this eye to be healed, to see perfectly. I command this arm to have flexibility so that it can move up and down and around. In Jesus' name, I command all chemical imbalances to stop in Jesus' name. Now we've gone specific now. We're getting specific with God. You think God doesn't know? God wants you to be specific. All right, here we go. And we're going to pray and believe the Lord. Uh, let me start right now. Now, all I want you to do, can I switch over to this mic? All I want you to do is just to believe God and say, Lord, I believe you want to heal me. And if you're going to go and say, Lord, I don't think you want to heal me, don't ask him. Look out because God is going to do something for you in Jesus' name right now. Pastor Wood, take this mic. Pray just that short prayer right now, standing right here. Lord Jesus, we just pray for healing today, whatever the need might be, physical, emotional, mental. God, you place your hands on us and provide healing, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. That's what, perfect. Amen. Now, I want you right now, if you're in there and you're standing near somebody and you're one of the healing people, I want you to put out your hand to that person, just like you're touching them right now in Jesus' name, wherever you are. Now, what I want to ask you to do is to find somebody today and testify to them. You say, well, how do you do that? Just say, listen, I was in a healing service today and I believe the Lord healed me. You say, even if I feel he doesn't, you don't go by feelings, you go by faith. For the just shall live by faith. And everybody said, amen. Now, I want the choir to sing something while you go out. I want you to make sure that you don't go out unless you at least wave at somebody. You don't have to touch them, but you can wave at somebody, everybody. Let's do it and let's find somebody to pray for. Everybody, God bless you is our prayer.